Hello there. My name is Petter Kjevre Nyland, and you are now watching the trial lecture that is a part of my PhD defense at the Department of Mathematical Sciences at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. The assigned topic for the trial lecture is Bassard theory. This theory is named after its inventors, Hyman Bass and Jean-Pierre Sær. As the story goes, uh, Sær gave a course or a lecture series at the Collège de France in Paris in 1968-69, outlining the underlying ideas of what was to become Bass Sær theory. Uh, Bass, he was uh, attending these lectures and he found the, the theory quite intriguing. Together, the two of them developed the theory further together. However, um, somewhat ironically, the two of them actually only have two publications together, and uh, Saad is the sole author of the original go-to reference for the topic, namely his monograph called Trees. Uh, Bass is nevertheless given due credit within the book. Uh, this book is still considered a uh, good introduction to the topic to this day, and uh, indeed it uh, has been one of my main sources uh, for preparing this lecture. And I will give a proper list of references at the end of this uh, lecture. So, what then is Bassard theory all about? Briefly speaking, it is about studying groups that act on, act on trees. Groups that act on trees. And uh, Bass side theory is considered a precursor of uh, geometric group theory. And today you could say that uh, Bass side theory is a tool in the toolbox of the geometric group theorist. To give some context, um, the older uh, sort of area of combinatorial group theory is the study of groups given by presentations. That is via generators and relations. And uh, combinatorial group theory becomes geometric group theory when the groups studied are allowed to act on objects like trees, spaces, manifolds, etc. In summary, Bass side theory asserts that group actions on trees correspond to something called graphs of groups. Or said in another way, graphs of groups, whatever this is, encode group actions on trees. So uh, the main goal of this lecture is to explain these two notions, namely group actions on trees and graphs of groups, graphs of groups, sorry, and to explain how these two are related. As mentioned, the two uh, sort of fundamental uh, mathematical concepts in Bassard theory is group actions on trees on the one hand and graphs of groups on the other hand. Uh, so we'll begin what's, uh, with what is hopefully the most familiar, namely uh, groups acting on trees. So let's begin discussing graphs and actions. And then I mean group actions on graphs. And trees, of course, are special kinds of graphs. So a graph, we will say, let's call it uh, denoted the gamma. It consists of sets V and E, where V is the vertices and E are the edges and maps, S and R, the source and range maps, giving us the source and range vertex of an edge. And uh, we want these graphs to be undirected, but with the possibility of choosing an orientation. So uh, this means that we're going to assume there is a so-called inversion map between the edges, where an edge map to something, an edge we call E bar, and we assume it is so that E bar is never equal to E. This is an actual inversion, so if I do it twice, I get the same edge back. And then this inverse edge is supposed to go in the opposite direction, so that the source of E bar is going to be the range of E, and then it actually follows from this that the range of E bar is the source of E. Uh, so if you start with a sort of what's what one is used to being an undirected uh, graph, then you just take each edge in your undirected graph and you split it into two edges. 
which is one of the edge and its inverse that go in opposite directions. So this really is undirected graphs, but uh, it's, it's convenient to do it like this. And this is the way Sad defines his, uh, his graphs. And uh, we can draw this like, I mean, an edge between the vertices V and W. You can sort of draw, then E goes this way, then E bar will go the other way. But uh, you, we, we're also probably going to draw them as more, uh, I'll say, classical and directed graphs, and then sort of each edge will be a pair of edges, uh, where one is the inverse of the other. Now some uh, sort of uh, graph theoretic notions. Uh, an edge, E, is a loop if it starts and ends in the same place, namely if the source of E equals the range of E, and uh, a path in uh, the graph gamma is a sequence of edges, mu1 equal mu1, uh, E1 up to I, En, say, with uh, the range of EI being the same as the source of EI plus one for all I. So it means that we you know, are moving like this. That the next edge starts where the previous one left off. Um, and uh, we call an edge a cycle. Um, if it starts and ends in the same place and the source of uh, this path mu is just the source of the first edge. And uh, if this is equal to the range of the last guy, which by definition is the range of this path. But we also um, demand that each EI is different from, I mean, sorry, that EI is not the inverse of the next edge. Uh, and this we refer to as there being no backtracking. Uh, no backtracking, because this really means that, I mean, we're sort of going, traversing across the same edge and then back again across the same edge. So it's sort of a meaningless thing to do. And uh, we, we need this to, to, to make our definitions uh, work out. Um, now, uh, continuing, uh, the graph gamma is connected if there is a path between any two vertices, between any two vertices. And now we can define what we mean by a tree. So a tree is a connected acyclic graph. So a graph that is connected and has no cycles. That is cycles without backtracking. Okay, so that's going to be the main graphs we're gonna be interested in. Now, uh, the degree of a vertex, or valency, someone calls it, of a vertex uh, in our graph is, by definition, the number of edges uh, uh, connected to V. So since our graphs are sort of undirected directed, you could either do the inverse image uh, under S or R. And um, we want to talk about group actions on trees. So then we need, uh, we of course want this to be an action by an automorphism. So uh, an automorphism an automorphism of our graph gamma, or an isomorphism, if you will, uh, will sort of denote it like, like this. Uh, it really consists of two bijections, uh, one between uh, from the vertices to themselves, and uh, or a permutation of the vertices, if you will, and the permutation of the edges. And, I'll just be a bit sloppy and denote them all by sigma. And uh, these are then bijections, and they, of course, need to preserve uh, uh, the source and range or incidence relation in the graph. So we demand that the source of the permuted edge E is just the permutation applied to the source of E. And uh, 
we wanted to respect this inversion map as well. So the permutation of the inverted edge is the inversion of the permuted edge. And then it follows from this that the, similarly the range of sigma e is uh, sigma of the range of e. Okay. So that's a, that's a group automorphism. So then an action by a group G uh, on uh, our graph gamma, which we denote with a curved arrow like this, is really just a group homomorphism, a group homomorphism from G, I'll put it down here, from G into the group of automorphisms of the graph. Um, but I mean, uh, we don't really give this a name and we're a bit sloppy, so we write, we write sort of G times V and G times E for this permutation or bijection induced by the group element G. And then now comes a little sort of technical assumption. We do assume from now on that whenever we have group action, we assume that what a group element G does to the edge E, well, I mean, where it, it does not send it to uh, the inverse edge for any E. And uh, this means that there are no inversions, so it doesn't invert any edges, or as, as some people call this a simplicial action. And this is needed for the, the, the quotient graph to, to make sense. And uh, we have a few more notions still. Um, so for a vertex, V, we define, and uh, in, a, in a, um, given a group action, we define the stabilizer, stabilizer subgroup as all uh, group elements that fix this vertex. And it's clear that this is a subgroup of G. And uh, similarly, we define the stabilizer group of an edge as all group elements which fixes this edge. And uh, it should be clear that this is, if you fix an edge, you have to fix the vertices too. So this is actually a subgroup of, uh, well, uh, both um, uh, 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 the source and the range of E. Um, also the stabilizer of range of E, and again, of course, a, a subgroup of G. And uh, the action by G on the graph gamma is free if uh, all these stabilizer groups on the vertices are trivial because then every group element moves everything and of course tacitly we assume that there are no inversions and we also need a notion of an orbit uh, so the orbit of a vertex is just the set where you allow uh, every group element to act on that vertex. So that's a subset of uh, vertices. So the orbits, of course, partition the vertex sets and uh, we define orbits of edges. Similarly, I'll just do like this. And uh, of course, uh, also these form partitions of the edge set. And uh, now we can define the quotient graph of an of an action. So the quotient graph, I'll denote it gamma mod G, uh, has as ver vertices um, this, uh, the vertex set is the set of of uh, orbits and. Uh, the edges in this quotient graph uh, is the set of edge orbits. This part and the partition is, uh, sorry, that's E in big E. And of course, uh, the direction of an edge in the orbit is given by, uh, uh, well, it goes through the orbit uh, of the vertex to which that edge points. And similarly with the inversion. So let me do a quick example to just uh, 
see that this is sort of what we intuitively want it to be. Uh, so let, uh, I'll just call it uh, gamma four be uh, a graph like this. I'll be a little sloppy in the interest of time, but it has four vertices and four edges. So it is sort of like a, a square. And uh, let the cyclic group of four elements act on this graph by rotations. So of course the, uh, the one mod four, or I mean the, 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 the canonical generator rotates this 90 degrees. Then uh, this action is free because every non-unit element here will move each edge to a different edge and each vertex, each vertex to a different vertex. And uh, I mean, all vertices are in the same orbit, so there's only one orbit of vertices and only one orbit of edges, or I mean, one orbit and then there's this inverse edge orbit. So the quotient graph, I mean, it will be just one vertex, just the orbit of any of them. So it's just V1 up to V4, say, and then there is a single edge, which then is a loop, which contain all, and it's inverse edge sort of, which, uh, which is the set of all the edges. Now, there are two uh, group theoretic constructions that form, uh, in some sense, the backbone of Bassar theory. They're the basic building blocks. So, building blocks. And these two constructions are, well, the first one are so-called amalgamated free products. And uh, very briefly speaking, uh, these are formed, or the situation, or, or sort of the construction is that if you have uh, a common subgroup F, or you have a group F that embeds into a group H and also embeds into a group K, then from this data, you can, or one can construct so-called free product of H by K uh, amalgamated along F. And if F is, if you just discard F, you can also take free products of groups. And the other building block of uh, Bass side theory are what's called HNN extensions. And here the setup is that you have, um, I guess we should underline these two. The setup is that you have two subgroups, say H and K, of a group G, and that these uh, two subgroups are actually isomorphic. Okay, and then from, uh, from this, you can build what's called the H and N extension of G relative to H and K. You can also denote it something like this, G star H K. And the point now is that G uh, embeds naturally in this H and N extension, and uh, there is some element that conjugates H onto K in this uh, H and N extension. Okay, but uh, uh, because of the time restriction, I will only get to focus on one of these, even though they're both equally important. And since I believe that perhaps most have seen amalgamated free products in algebraic topology in the context of the Seifert van Kampen theorem, I've chosen to focus on H and N extensions instead. So we'll discuss those in more detail now. The uh, H, N and N in H and N extension stands for Higman, Neumann and Neumann, who introduced this construction in uh, 1949, and uh, they proved, for instance, that in fact we have this embedding of the group G into uh, G star, that it actually is an extension. And uh, for this uh, exposition, I'm going to just rewrite the input slightly, because it will make everything more convenient, I think. So the input is one subgroup H of the bigger group G, and a map, or an embedding really, or say another embedding perhaps of H uh, into G that we call uh, theta. Uh, and of course it doesn't have to be the inclusion map. So you can think of the K above as 
the image of theta, uh, sorry, the image of h under theta, which of course is isomorphic to h. So these are really equivalent, but this will make it a bit more slick. And uh, you can define um, this, uh, the h and n extension of g uh, relative to h and theta, which we'll also write as g star h sub h theta like this, or maybe just g star. And uh, yeah, this is, will require some space, so I'll just continue down here. So uh, essentially our group is, um, or this group, it, it, it's given by the elements of G and all of their relations. And then we add an auxiliary element or letter, which for uh, to be pedantic, is not supposed to be an element or letter in G. This is the stable, stable letter. So we add uh, another generator and the relations that conjugating an element of H by T should give us back precisely theta, ah, let me do it a bit better, theta of H, and this should be for all small H in big H. Yes. And as mentioned, uh, Higman Neumann Neumann proved that indeed G embeds naturally as a subgroup here. Um, so let me just briefly mention some examples. If you have the case that you set h equal to g, and then uh, and you take your theta to be an isomorphism from g to itself, or an automorphism, uh, then the h and n extension of g relative to g and this isomorphism is the semi-direct product of G by Z. So you can say that H and N extensions generalize semi-direct products by Z. And there's a famous or well-known class of groups called Baumslag solitaire groups, and defined in terms of two integers, P and Q. And they have this uh, um, they're one relator groups and they have this finite presentation they have the generators x and t the relation is that t conjugates x to the power p to its uh, x to the power q and we see that this is nothing but an h extension h n n extension of the integers relative to the subgroups pz and qz or we map generator to generator now uh, we uh, of course want this uh, group meaning h and n extensions to act on a tree okay so that's that's the next step here is to describe a tree on which and H H H N N extension acts. So to be a bit short, just write G tilde for our uh, H N N extension, and then we define a graph that we will sort of uh, already denote by T, although one sort of has to prove that it is in fact a tree by choosing the vertices in our graph or tree to be uh, the left cosets of the original group G inside the H and N extension and edges in our graph are the left cosets of this subgroup H again left cosets inside the H and N extension and the source and ranges of edges are given as follows. Or, I mean, yeah, technically, we also need to add these inverse edges that are just artificial copies. Uh, now, the source of this uh, edge, uh, gamma h, is gamma g. And the range of the edge gamma h is gamma t g, or t is this stable letter, and Gamma is any element of the H and N extension. So 
uh, an edge looks like this. Gamma H goes from gamma G to gamma T G. Okay? And uh, there's an obvious way to get an action here, namely by left left translation of call sets, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit short on time, so I would have liked to draw some examples. So <laughs> instead I will give an exercise to the, not the reader, but the watcher. And that is to um, draw this tree for the H and an extension. There's the Baumslag solitaire group of 2Z and 3Z. Okay, that will hopefully be instructive. Now I will just jump to a theorem which says that in this context, this tree we've created on which, yeah, and it, it should be fairly obvious that the H and N extension indeed is, uh, that is, indeed is an action by uh, tree isomorphisms. So this theorem, or these facts, if you will, is that T is indeed a tree. And that's something you prove by Britton's lemma and normal forms in H and N extensions, etc. And the degree of any vertex gamma g is the same and it's equal to the index of h in g plus the index of theta h or k in g. So this is actually a regular tree because all vertices have the same valency. And the stabilizers of... Oi! What happened there? The stabilizers of a vertex they're all conjugate to the group G itself. So I'll just subconj. And similarly, stabilizers of edges turn out to be conjugate to H. And uh, there are, this action is transitive, so there are only one orbit each type. So the orbit of a vertex is just all uh, cosets of G and the orbit of an edge is just all cosets of H in the H and N extensions. And then similarly you have with the inverse um, edge. Now uh, we can um, draw the quotient graph uh, which will be T mod g tilde, since there is only one orbit of vertices and one orbit of edges and the inverse orbit, the quotient graph of this uh, action is just a single loop. Having talked at some length now about uh, group actions on trees, uh, it's now fitting that we move over to the other sort of uh, fundamental concept in Bass side theory, namely graphs of groups. So a graph of groups is, or let us denote it curly G, consists of the following data. First of all, it's uh, we need a connected graph gamma, given in terms of vertices, edges, source range map, and inversion, which we're too lazy to write up. And for each vertex, we have a group called the vertex group at V and it will be denoted gamma V. And similarly, for each edge, we have an edge group and we have embeddings along the edges. So we have embeddings denoted alpha E uh, from the edge group at E into uh, the source vertex of E for all E in E and uh, yeah, sorry, I was supposed to write up here that the edge group of the inverse edge is set to the same as that edge. So this really says that the edge group gamma E embeds both into gamma SE and gamma RE. 
going via the inversion. So that's the definition. So in some sense, a graph of groups is a graph of groups and some embeddings. Now, um, uh, an important point is that if we have uh, an action by a group on a tree, then we do get um, uh, we can define a graph of groups structure on this quotient graph that we saw earlier. So how do we do that? We uh, let we start by letting Q be the uh, projection map or the quotient map that takes vertices and edges to their orbit set. Now for each uh, yeah, so gamma now is this quotient graph. So for each vertex in the quotient graph, meaning each orbit and edge also in the quotient graph, so edge orbit, we need to choose representatives V prime now uh, a vertex in the original tree and E prime an edge in the original tree. And then we define the vertex group at V to be the stabilizer group of the representative V prime and similarly the edge group to be the stabilizer group at the representative E prime. And then we're supposed to have embeddings from gamma E, which is uh, the stabilizer of this representative into the stabilizer of the source of E's representative, which is just gamma at S E. So denote the source of E by V, then by definition of the orbits, there is some G in G that technically depends on V and E, which are vertex and edge in the quotient graph and this g in the group satisfy g times the source of the representative edge is the vertex representative. Now recall that the stabilizer of an edge is a subgroup of the stabilizer of its uh, source and range, so the source of E prime. So from this we have that uh, if we take conjugation of this gamma E by G and recall that gamma E is just the stabilizer group at the representative, uh, this is of course a subgroup of the stabilizer group of the representative. Source of the edge, yeah. And then because G moves the source of E prime to V prime. This is actually nothing but the stabilizer of V prime, which by definition is gamma V. So what we see is that conjugating by G moves us from gamma E into gamma V. So we can define alpha E of H, say, where H is an element of gamma E to be G H G inverse, which then lands in gamma V, and G really is this uh, element G in the group that moves source of E prime to V prime. Let us now see how this plays out uh, in the case of an H and N extension. So recall that earlier we looked at the H and N extension of G with respect to H and some theta embedding H into G in a different way, and this acted on some canonical tree. And uh, the quotient of this tree by the action was a loop and the single vertex was essentially all uh, G cosets in, uh, okay, G tilde is now G star and it had a single loop that were, was composed of all, or all H cosets. So really we just have a vertex and a loop. That's the quotient graph. Now we want a graph of group structure on this as we described here from the 
action. And of course, uh, it's easy now to pick representatives. We just pick G here and H here. Uh, you, you could make another choice, but I would argue that's the uh, uh, natural choice. Uh, so the the, ver the one uh, vertex group is the stabilizer of G as a call set under the action by the HNN extension. And uh, this is identified with G itself as a subgroup of, yeah. So this is what I mean by this G tilde, of course. Um, and the edge groups are the stabilizers of H, which again is identified with H as a subgroup of G, as a subgroup of G tilde. Okay, and again, I don't have time to do the nice computations, even though I wish I did. But if you go through the construction above, so I guess I can say this is again an exercise to figure out that if you look at alpha E, which then is supposed to go between the edge group at E, which is H, and into G, this is actually equal to just the inclusion of H into G. And the other, uh, the embedding the other way is where something interesting happens. So again, it's supposed to go from H into G, but now uh, the thing is that the source of E bar is the range of E, which is really the range of H, which is T G. So you, you get something non-trivial non here. So in the end, uh, if you do this, you do recover alpha E. Again, it's still a map from H to G, but it's not the inclusion this time. You get your map theta back, this potentially different embedding. And this, uh, uh, I mean, this graph of groups is just a loop. So this you can call a loop of groups, yeah, and well, now we've essentially seen how a group acting on a tree gives us a graph of groups. So let us now focus on going the other direction, namely from a graph of groups to an action by a group on a tree. We don't have that much time left, so we should try to get to the point here. So the way this direction goes is namely via the fundam oh, sorry, the fundamental group, the fundamental group of a graph of groups. All right. So let curly G equal gamma, gamma, gamma v's, gamma e's, alpha e's, etc. Slightly sloppy notation, but a graph of groups as defined before. And to define the fundamental group, we need to pick, make a choice, pick a spanning tree. Let's call, denote it t0 inside gamma. This just means a maximal subtree. And uh, this is basically, uh, analogous to the way you pick a base point when you define the fundamental group uh, in a topological space. Okay, so now the fundamental group of the graph of groups curly G at sort of the base point or base spanning tree T naught is denoted pi 1 curly G T0 and and it is given as follows. We take all the vertex groups, we arrange over V, and then we add some, let's say, possibly stable letters, TE indexed over all the edges, because that's sort of our generators or starting elements. And then we should add some relations and I'll try to do it like this because the page is not broad enough. So the first relation is that this letter T E of the inverse edge is the inverse of T E. 
and the second relation, and yeah, so this is for all E in uh, the edge of this uh, gamma, and we let all TEs be trivial when the edge belongs to the spanning tree, so I'll write the edges in T, not to be confused with the edges in gamma above, and then it's the third and uh, sort of most interesting relation in, so in some sense, is that T E inverse times alpha E of G T E is alpha E bar of G, and this is for all E in all edges in the graph. And this relation here is called the bus side relation. And yeah, uh, the group, uh, each of the vertex groups embed into this guy. Um, the choice of spanning tree doesn't matter, optoisomorphism, just as with the path connected um, topological spaces. And, and the thing now, sort of the, the key is that even though I didn't get to talk that much about amalgamated free product, this bus side relation here basically is either sort of giving you an H and N extension uh, in the case that the edge is not in the spanning tree because then you sort of get this conjugation as in an H and N uh, extension. Whereas if your edge is in the spanning tree, then this TE is set to one. So these TE inverse guys vanish and then you're basically identifying two and yeah, of course here down here, G is supposed to be in gamma E. You are identifying two embeddings of the same guy. So this is really an, an amalgamation. Okay, in the interest of time, I will skip the description of the bus side tree, which is a tree you construct from a graph of groups on which the fundamental group acts. I will instead uh, give some examples uh, in terms of H and N extensions and amalgamated free products. Uh, and what we have is that if we look at the fundamental group of a loop of uh, graphs, like we had before, namely we had uh, one vertex group G and one edge, which is H, a subgroup of G, so that there is, here we have the inclusion map and the other embedding is given in terms of some theta, and then there is only one spanning tree in this case, it's just the subgraph, which is just a vertex and no edges, then the fundamental group of this graph of groups is precisely, it's quite easy to see, you just look at the, the definition of the fundamental group, you get the H and N extension back, okay? So a loop of groups sort of corresponds to an H and N extension. On the other hand, uh, although I didn't look at it, an edge of groups, which uh, is, uh, we have a single edge between two groups H and K, and then we have an edge group F embedding into both of these, uh, that's the other way, whoopsie, embedding in both of these guys. And also here, there is uh, actually only one choice of uh, spanning tree, and that's the whole graph itself. This fundamental group is isomorphic to the amalgamated free product of H and K along F. So indeed, if you had well, if you look on your own and find the canonical tree on which this free amalgamated product acts, the quotient graph of groups will be this edge of groups. And of course, this is no coincidence. This is sort of the whole point of Bas side theory. So let me just end by quickly saying what the fundamental theorem of Bas side theory is. And it really is that uh, if you start with a group acting without inversions on a tree and you go to the graph of groups that consists of the quotient graph and stabilizers, well, that's the first thing we saw today. The second thing we saw is uh, from a graph of groups, I'll just write G of G, we can, at least I said how you can find the fundamental group with respect to some spanning tree. Now, what I skipped was that actually there is a canonical tree, the bus side tree that you get. And now the fundamental theorem says that these two operations are mutually inverse. So indeed, what I mentioned in the introduction that 
Groups acting on trees correspond precisely to graphs of groups. Okay, um, thank you for watching. Oh, and yeah, here are the main references that I uh, used to prepare this lecture.